bright coming on. How are we doing? Good. So, a uh, couple things before we get started. Um, today's my anniversary for, for being here. So, my family has been at this church for three years now. Um, so, we're kicking off year four. So, thank you all for welcoming us. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being our extended family. That's what we needed. Thank you. Thank you for making fun of me because I cry all the time. <laughs> That's already happened today, thanks to Peyton. She said, hey, don't forget your tissues. And I was like, why is that? Because you cry every time you're up there. And just so you know, I was already crying over there listening to you worship. So... It's going to be one of those days, I guess, where you're going to see weeping rusty. But that's okay, because um, I love you, and I'm okay being vulnerable in front of you. So um, there's this wonderful annual event that happened this last week. It's called Spring Break. And I know some parents in here have loved it because they've been cooped up with their kids all week. Some of who went to the beach to try to get some warm weather. Some people tried to go to the mountains and get in some last bit of skiing. So let me ask you, who in here are beach people? Raise your hand. A good number of you. Okay. What about mountain people? Okay. The mountain people seem a little less excited today. Your, your hands were kind of more down here. So the, the, one of the joys about living here is we can be in either one in about an hour, hour and a half, right? Yeah. So it's, it's wonderful. It's like kind of an awesome location. My family is kind of in the beach camp right now. When we decide we need some rest and relaxation, we typically head up to Cannon Beach. And ironically enough, the shirt that I have on is of Cannon Beach. So it kind of worked out for me today. You would think I planned that, but I'm not that big into planning. So God has his, his sense of humor for me. Now, one thing that I've noticed every time that I go to Cannon Beach is the diverse amount of people. You see, Cannon Beach has kids with their moms and dads. It also has middle-aged people with no kids. It has retired people there. It has different socioeconomic people there, different races there, different faith groups are there, or the lack thereof. You see, Cannon Beach is a diverse area, and we live in a diverse area, amen? But one thing that is very evident when we go to the beach is everybody there is unified at the beach. They're there for rest and relaxation and to enjoy God's creation. And I see the beauty in that. So today our passage is going to be coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Now to give you a little bit of background of what's going on in 1 Corinthians is that Paul is writing to a young church. You see in about the 50s, not 1950s, in the 50s, Paul went to Corinth. He spent three years there, and he hung out with Aquila and Priscilla. You remember those names? So he, he stayed with them. Timothy and Silas would link up with them, and the three would go out evangelizing. And because of their efforts through the Holy Spirit, the young church was born. And after three years, the church was a very diverse group of people. They were made up of the community, so they looked like the community, which is a very good thing. But what happens when you get a large group of people who are diverse is, is you start having some issues. And some of these issues begin to have dividing lines. Or 
segregations. Or as we say in the church, silos. Because one thing that was happening is people were saying, hey, I'm going to follow Paul. Hey, I'm going to follow Apollos. They were leaning into what they believed was right because it was their preference. They're like, I like this, so this is how things should be done. And oftentimes in the church, we're like, I like the music this way, so this is how it should be done. I like this preacher because they're a little bit more charismatic than the other one, so I'm going to only listen to them. Regardless of what Scripture is pointing them to. So after Paul leaves, he stays in contact with this church. And through his communications, he's learning that the church is facing some issues. And these issues include the division. The church was immoral. Those within the church were suing one another. The church was confused about marriage, divorce, and celibacy. Those within the church only cared about themselves. And those within the church were not using the gifts that God gave them to further His kingdom. So in chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, Paul begins to lay out spiritual gifts. So the question that we have to ask ourselves today, what is a spiritual gift? You see, a spiritual gift at its core is a gift from God that you did not earn, that you did not deserve, but he freely gave you because he loves you. So it is your duty to use this gift to further his kingdom because that is the whole purpose he gave it to you. Not to sit on it. You see, church, we are not to be consumers. We're supposed to be contributors. We are not consumers. We are contributors. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 7, this isn't on the screen, but I want to read it to you. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Church, we are a diverse group. We all come from different backgrounds. Because I'm willing to bet not many of you are from Texas like I am. I grew up differently than you. I talked differently than you. Some of you in here are from other countries. You have different cultural backgrounds than what I had in the South. But yet God placed us here together to use our gifts to further his kingdom. So we are not to sit back on our gifts and just consume what's happening here at the church. We're supposed to be a part of the mission, working together to accomplish God's mission. So our text that we're mainly going to look at today is verses 12 through 27. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body. Whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, we are all made to drink of one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. 
If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body. If, <clears throat> sorry, it is not for this reason any the less a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now, God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all one member, where would the body be? Verse 20. But now there are many members but one body. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. Or again, the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And are less presentable members because much more presentable. Or become much more presentable. Whereas our more presentable members have no need for it. But God has so composed the body, giving more abundant honor to the member which lacked, so that there may be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually of it. This church, we are one body. We are a collective group. We are a diverse group. But yet we have unity. Let me read verse 12 to 13 again. If, for even the body is one, yet has many members. And the whole body, though are many, are one. So also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free. And we're all made to drink of one spirit. This passage right here is saying that you're not an individual. You have individual gifts. You have individual talents. You come from an individual background. But in that individuality, in your diverseness, we have unity because of Christ. The same spirit that is within me is within you. I did not receive any more spirit than you. You see, if you have Jesus in your life, you believe that he is the son of God, you believe that you are a sinner and that he died on the cross for you and raised again on the third day, his spirit dwells in you. You didn't earn it, you didn't deserve it, it was freely given to you because God loves you. And he desires to have a relationship with you just as he does with me. Our giftings and our background may be different, but we are unified in A, the mission of the church, and B, we are unified because the Holy Spirit dwells within me and in you. Amen. So I don't know if, you've, if you heard this little event um, happening the whole month of March. It's called March Madness. Anybody in here a fan of NCAA basketball? Did y'all do a bracket this year? So I decided to do a bracket with my family 
and also some of the uh, soldiers in my unit. Now, I made the mistake of waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and doing my bracket. So I only got maybe 25% right. I think game two, I was out. And then he just nosedived from there. I picked my team to end up going to, I thought was the Sweet 16, but apparently I put them in the Elite Eight. They lost first round. Yeah, it was heartbreaking. But one thing that I've noticed in basketball or any team sport is that people rally around their teams. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter if you went to the school. You could be a fan that lives all the way across the country just because you like their colors, but yet when your team wins, you cheer with them. You believe you have a part in that, even though you watch the game online or on TV. You say, we won, don't we? Because we're unified in cheering for our team. And Paul is saying we are unified in the victory of Christ. Not in the victory that we did, but in what he did and he alone. So before we dive too far into what this passage is saying, you must ask yourself, A, am I even a part of the family of God? Have you given your life over to Christ? Have you asked for forgiveness? Have you repented of your sins and turned the other way and started running to the Holy Spirit? And if you haven't, may today be the day where you give your life over to Him. Because again, the same Spirit that dwells in me and fires me up and fires you up will come within you and change your life. And these gifts that we're talking about today will be freely given to you. Because he loves you. And he wants a relationship with you. He wants you to be a part of his work. So the, regardless of your gifts, we are all equally a part of the body. You don't have to be the preacher. You don't have to be the teacher. God has gifted you. And whatever your gift is, is equally important than the one standing on the platform. Verse 14. For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot says, because I am not a hand, I am not a part of the body. It is not for this reason any less part of the body, of, a part of the body. And if the ear says, because I am not an eye, I am not a part of the body. Is it not for this reason any the less a part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But now God has placed the members, each one of them, in the body just as he desired. If they were all members, where would the body be? But now... There are many members, but one body. You see, Paul is painting a picture here. He's painting a picture so that we as believers will not look at across the room at another believer as an outsider. Because the sad truth is, many of us will look across the room and say, you know what, my gifts are better than theirs, so... I'm going to serve and they're not. Or my gifts are not as good and lofty as theirs, so I'm going to sit back and be a consumer. 
instead of looking across the room and saying, hey, their gifts are different than mine. Where I am weak, they are strong. So we need to team up and work together to further the kingdom of God. And he's pointing out three things here. The first thing he is making in this section is that every member is equally part of the body. A hand is equally as part of the body as an ear, as your eye is, as your nose is. You're all part of the body. You all have a place to play. And you each, secondly, you each have your own function. Imagine if your whole body was just an eye. How would you smell? You'd be pretty dirty because you'd have to roll around everywhere. Right? You wouldn't be able to wash yourself. You'd get a pink eye. That wouldn't be fun. Me, I would get hungry. If I was just an eye, I wouldn't be able to eat. I might be able to lose a little bit of weight. But we all have a function. My ear plays a different function than my mouth. My hands play a different function than my feet. I'm not one of those people that can play the piano with my feet. That just creeps me out. Because my hands should operate different. Right? And in the church, we each operate different. And the third thing that he's making in this point is that everything that is done, all of our giftings, our placings in this body is designed by God. It wasn't an accident. So let me ask you, do you have the gift of gab? There are some of you in here can talk to a wall. <laughs> then maybe you should be a greeter. There's some of you in here who just ooze with empathy. There's some of you in here are excellent scholars and teachers. There's some of you in here just have this natural ability to calm a crying baby. Every one of those things are equally important because when you remove one of those things, the whole body starts to suffer and fall apart. But when we work together, we are heading to accomplish the mission that God has placed us on. You see, God says that, number one, we should love him. And we should love his people. How we say it here at the church is we have passion for Jesus. We also have compassion for others, for people. To bring transformation for all. If you want to bring transformation for all, then use your gifts. Quit sitting back and being a consumer. Be a contributor. Allow your gifts to shine. Because your gifts aren't my gifts. You were placed here for a specific reason. The beauty of it is you have a staff who is vastly diverse, but yet all of us desire to get you plugged in. All of us desire to see you grow in your faith. All of us desire to see every member serving their church and serving their community. About 10 years ago is when I experienced one of the biggest losses in my life. And many of you have experienced major losses in your life. You see, during this time is when my mother was going through cancer. 
And the church stepped up in a major way and was the church to me. You see, they saw that my family needed some meals. So they provided some meals. They saw that my family needed prayer. So we had people praying. They saw that we just needed somebody to sit and cry with us. So people came over just to sit and cry. The last thing I needed in that moment was another Bible study. I love the Bible. Don't get me wrong. I love to read it. I love to study it. I love to preach it. But if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes that's going to be the furthest thing from our mind. When life smacks us in the face, sometimes we just need the church to be the church and step up and love us. Meet us where we're at. Have empathy and walk in the challenges and the joys of life. Church, that's what we're called to do. And the beauty of this, four years later, the church did it again when my dad went through the same thing. They didn't abandon us. They didn't say, hey, you've already got us once. You can't have us again. No, they continue to meet us where we're at. It is my prayer that we are that way. When one of us suffers, we all suffer. When one of us rejoices, we all rejoice. Because we are unified, yet we're diverse. And each of us has a role to play in this body. Verse 21. And the eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you. And again, the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, it is much truer that the members of the body which seem to be weaker are necessary. And those members of the body which we deem less honorable, on these we bestow more abundant honor. And our less presentable members become much more presentable, whereas our more presentable members have no need of it. But God has so composed the body, gifting more abundant honor to the member which lacked, so that they may have no division in the body, but that, they, but that the members may have the same care for one another, and if one member suffers, all members suffer with it. If one member is honored, all members rejoice with it. Now you are Christ's body and individually members of it. Ephesians 2.10 For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand so that we would walk in him. Church, before the foundations of the earth, God had a plan for you. His plan for you is that today you'd be sitting in these seats so that you can further his kingdom. Not so you can sit on the gifts, so you can use your gifts to see other peoples come to know him. That is why you were created, to serve him, to have a relationship with him, to further his kingdom. So what is your gift? We at the church can use all kinds of gifts here. One thing that I have seen over the last 20 plus years of being in ministry and also in the chaplaincy is this phrase of self-care really come up in the more recent years. Okay, nothing wrong with self-care. Because there are times where we have to just stop and take a breath because life does smack us in the face, yes? I recognize that because I've been there. I recognize that there are seasons in your life where you just have to take a step back and be ministered to. 
but it's for a season. It's not for a lifetime. You see, when all you are concerned about is self-care instead of mutual care, the hands stop being the hands. The hands stop going out and being the body of Christ to the community. And our body will begin to look like the culture around us instead of us influencing the culture. Church, we have to be about mutual care. We have to get involved. And that looks different for each and every one of you. Because each and every one of you has a different gift than I do. You have a different gift than the person sitting next to you. Amy's gift is completely different than mine. She has bukus of patience. Bukus. If she didn't, she wouldn't be able to hang out with me. But yet, you put her on this platform, she's not going to be near as chatty as I am. I'm one of those people that will talk to a wall. I had a teacher tell me that, so what did I do? I turned around and talked to the wall just to prove her right. She was like, I don't know what to do with you, man. I was like, just let me be. It'd be all right. And that's okay. Because where I'm weak, she's strong. She's very organized. You don't want to see my office right now. I got papers all over my desk. I have this weird thing about not using drawers. So I got like stacks. I can tell you what's in it. But my organization is not her organization. Some of you are very organized. And that could help us out a lot. But one thing that I remember growing up is the people who ministered to me. You see, I was blessed to be in a God-fearing family. I was blessed to grow up in the church. So when I was a child, I would walk through the doors, and the greeters would be sitting there waiting to say hello to me and hand me my bulletin. And I knew if I had my green blazer on, they were going to ask me if I won the Masters that year. (laughs) But that was something I looked forward to as a six-year-old. I remember in my three- and four-year-old class, Tommy Young teaching me. And he was a college student. I remember Mary who taught me in kids' choir. She would have a tennis ball teaching us how to open up our mouths correctly. Because some of us just kind of sing like this instead of projecting. I remember Bob, R.C., and Herb showing me what it meant to be a man of God. These were older, retired men who loved their church, who loved their families, and who adored their wives. But yet they would stop and have a conversation with me each and every week. There's a reason why to this day I love hanging out with the seniors. Because these men showed me what it was like. I wanted to be in their game nights. I wanted to hear their conversations. I wanted to learn from them because they oozed Christ to me. Because they used their gifts. I saw their spouses working in the kitchen. 
They were serving with their gifts. I remember Pam and Patty, who taught me in preschool, who also taught me in kids' ministry, who I began to work with as an intern. And to this day, I will call them for advice. Because guess what, church? They're still serving in those roles. They are using the gifts and the talents that God gave them to speak into the generations below them. That is how we need to be. We cannot be siloed off. We cannot just say, well, I've done my time. You may not be able to pick up a four-year-old anymore. But you know what? There's something you can still do within the church. God is not done with you yet. If you're sitting in this chair, God is not done with you yet. There's no retirement from serving. I'm sorry. You may want to retire. You can retire from your job, but the beauty of the church, it's not a corporation. It's an organism. We're a living, breathing thing. And to help us function, we need your breath. We need you to play a role. We need you to contribute. And there's some in here who've never even joined this family. Because you haven't given your life over to Christ. There's some of you who are still sitting out on the wings saying, who's this Jesus person? You see, the Bible says that we all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God. What that means is, you've messed up. I've messed up. God had a plan for us, and we didn't meet that plan. But yet, he had a plan for us, and that was to send his son to the cross. And we just celebrated that this past week. You see, Jesus went to the cross so that you and I could have a relationship with him. And the beauty of the cross is that he was laid in a tomb, and three days later, he kicked that tomb door right open. And you and I, get to have the relationship with him. And all we have to do is confess with our mouth is that Jesus is Lord. And the Holy Spirit will come within you and change you in a mighty way. So church, I pray that everyone in this room knows Jesus as their Lord and Savior. That's first. Secondly, I pray that you realize the gifts that God has given you and that you use them. Because we are a diverse group, but yet we are a unified group because God has placed us here for a time of now to be the hands and feet or as the preschoolers are learning today, to be the light in our community. That is my prayer for you. What are you doing about it? So to help you, if you look in your bulletin, over on the right-hand side, we have placed a few ideas for you. So we, we're going to put application in immediately. If you're not serving anywhere, if you just want to have, hey man, where are people short? Where can I get plugged in? There's a few spots right there. I can tell you, we're short in preschool. See, that's a wonderful problem to have in that meaning we have young families here. We have preschoolers who are here. But yet we need people to love on them. We need people to tell them about Jesus. We need people to hold babies. And I can tell you this, moms, I'm loving seeing your babies in your arms right now. There's three of them in here. It, it, it lights me up. We need people 
to join the media team. We need greeters. There are countless of ways for you to get plugged in. And if you're like, man, I don't know what my gift is, we would love to have that conversation with you and help you figure out what your gifts are and get you serving so that you can be the hands and feet. It's not just so that, hey, Rusty can sit back and eat bonbons. Because when you serve, you get a mighty blessing. I'm constantly having to remind myself to stop doing things. Because one of the things that my mom told me when she was battling cancer is because she was that way, I don't want people to help me. But she had to realize when she said, no, I don't want your help, she's taking somebody's blessing away. So church, we want your help. We want you to be blessed. We want you to be a blessing to somebody else in here. We want these kids to have the same memories that I just explained to you 40 years later. Because they changed my life. So whose life are you changing today? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. God, I pray that if anybody in here doesn't know you as Lord and Savior, that today be the day that they come to faith in you. May they be bold enough to say, Pastor, tell me more about this Jesus. God, I pray that you search within and reveal to every person in here their giftings and where they have fallen short so that they can make a course correction and serve you. May we not be consumers but yet may we be contributors. Lord Jesus, we come before you today. We ask that, that we be the hands and feet. We ask that you open up our hearts and our eyes to see the needs around us and that we be willing to step in and meet those needs. And we ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. So church, you have a yellow card. I did not bring one up with me. That is a great opportunity to connect with us. Or you can scan the QR code. Let us know how the Holy Spirit is stirring in you today. And I promise you, we will, we will connect with you, either by phone or email or text message. Because we want to see you fur get further in your faith. We don't want you to be stagnant. We want to get you plugged in somewhere. So reach out. Let us know how we can help you grow. Amen? And we got some great things coming. So are you all ready to see Big Aaron on the screen? Everybody say, show me Big Aaron. Show me All right. I, I want to thank you for your tithes and offerings. Um, it is, A, through your giftings that our church functions the way it functions, both physically of what you do, but also monetarily. Because the truth is, stuff costs money, right? And it is because of those that we get to operate. It is because of those that we get to reach out beyond these walls. So again, thank you for that. You see, giving a tithe and offering isn't just, oh, here, here's my money. It's an act of worship. 
Because what you're doing is giving something back to God and saying, hey God, you've blessed me with this. I'm giving it back to you so that you can bless somebody else. So that your kingdom can be furthered. So when you give of that today, think of that. Think of the larger impact that you are making. Think of what you're doing for your soul. Because you are worshiping. Let me pray for you. Let me bless you. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to continue to worship you through our gifts. God, I pray that you use these gifts to transform lives. Not only those lives within these walls, but also within our community and beyond. Lord, may we be your hands and feet this week. May we look for opportunities to share our faith with those who do not know you. God, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. We thank you that you desire to have a relationship with us. And God, we honor you today with these few dollars and with our voices. In your holy and precious name, amen. stand with me as we just worship our way out this morning. Thank you, Jesus. You took my place. You laid inside my tomb of sin. And you were buried for three days. But then you walked right out again. And now death has no sting. And life has no end. By the blood of the Lamb, so thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved my life. You brought me from the darkness into glory. Bye.
you so much for choosing to worship with us today. Don't forget your yellow card. You can draw. Write it down.